Face to Facts for the Bruins pregame show. I am your host, Nick Face. It's good to see you all once again. We have Tom Smith back in center circle and Phil back in his corner <laughs> life position. I'm more like a fern. That's right. Well, we're ready for the pregame show here for the Bruins. Uh, the, the while last, while we're the taping one. this show, we are getting ready for game five of this lovely series. We've seen a lot in the past week or so since we've been with you last. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we've seen, what needs to change, what's some good, what's some bad, and hopefully you'll get our predictions and our expectations the rest of this ride. So let's lead off with Tom and just give his general overview of how are you feeling right now about the Stanley Cup right now. Uh, as long as Tuca stays in net, I'm feeling great. Okay. Okay. That's a good opening point. I'm feeling great. Um, I mean, there's not... I mean, there aren't too many positives to look at from at either either side, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I guess you could say that the third line is probably the best line offensively right now. I would say so. And the fourth line is probably the best defensive. Can line you right remind now. the viewers who the third line is so uh, they can re- they can have somewhat of an idea? And, um, my, and myself. Of yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. Well, you got well, Coil the there. Center, the center's Coil, and then you have Johansson on one side, yep. and you have. Um, was it Heinen? Dante Heinen? It was Heinen in game uh, four. Correct. Because Bacchus was on, on to line, line two. One, two, and three. Yeah. But he, they moved him up to line two. Yes. So you've got a little combination from that. Who's been the most electric on that line? I mean, there's really two, but I mean, if you want to talk in scoring, it's Charlie Coyle. Yeah, I would say so. Um, but Johansson has also been really good. I mean, you don't get scoring from Coyle if you don't have Johansson making those plays. Right yeah, they've definitely been a great great one-two pair on that line. Phil, your opening take on what you've seen from so far well, or heard, <laughs> what do you feel? He yeah, has feel? an opinion. How do you feel about this? Well, I did as I emailed you and Tom yep. during the week. You did. On occasion, I'm like, oh, I caught the third third period Subject. of game four. To go I to actually got to watch the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or parts of it. Uh, no, I watched actually when they were up, I think, 5-2. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, St. Louis looks like they will not quit. And, I mean, at this point... I mean, they have a know? lot of, of, of goodwill, I will yeah. say. The they're will resilient. to compete is what I've noticed most about them. They're similar to the Bruins, but more, in a, more of a separator is their physicality. As, as being more physical. Exactly. Yeah. And Belling, is it Bellington? Uh, Bennington. 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 Uh, yeah, he's... Uh, he's got been, a lot of openings, doesn't he? Got, and he's actually, I mean, to be honest, I mean, he's been doing pretty well as a rookie, right? I mean, like... He is their fifth option of the oh, year yeah, as a right. goaltender, yeah, yeah. I think. That's is that nice. correct, Tom? I believe so, yeah. That's crazy. Fifth. What we've seen here, and if you're a fan of Barstool Sports and, and, and their big saying on stuff, it's... Cycle the puck, pucks on net, shoot the puck. Mm. The Bruins did not do that in game two or four. Am I correct on that uh, evaluation? They did more in game four than they did in game two. Yes. Game two, they were basically non-existent. Non-existent. I thought that was their worst game out of the out of the four. So far out of the four, game two was definitely Gept, the worst. Game two was their worst. And it was surprising because that was at home in front of your crowd. I think what happened on that game is they got a little bit too complacent. After their game one win... I don't think they were as ramped up, fired up, thought they could go through the motions and kind of win this whole thing. Yeah. That wasn't the case. And, and credit to the Blues for stepping up and showing that they're going to make this a, 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 a tough series and a hard-fought series. Um, but that's what makes good playoff hockey. That is what makes good playoff hockey. Now, if you've noticed, too, I have a special shirt on today, and I wore this for a point. I didn't wear this because of this person who's shown up greatly in the playoffs. I'm wearing this because this is somebody that must show up, score, and be a star like he should be. I'm wearing this shirt to make a point tonight and for today so that Bergeron and that first line gets their damn act together because I'm real fed up and what I've seen with this first line with sometimes they show, sometimes they don't. What's the problem? Is he hurt? Uh, <clears throat> he told Pierre Squid McGuire that... I just have to make that point with who, Squid. I don't know. I can't stand Pierre McGuire. <laughs> oh, right. He's an in-glass <laughs> dum-dum that sits down on the ice. Oh, just... And, he, and he, uh, he's basically a butt kisser. He, well, oh. yeah, he wants everybody to kiss his butt. Especially Sidney Crosby. He, like, he likes uh, kissing his butt. P.K. Subban, too, he loves to do that, too, with 
But anyways, that's another point for another day. Yeah. That's beside the point. Yeah. He told Pierre that Pierre asked the question, are you hurt? And he said, no, I'm good. Of course he's not going to say he's hurt or not. Mm. We're going to find out after this series yep. what's going on mm. with all of them. I think there is something physically up with Bergeron, yeah. but he's got to tough it out. He played it with the broken uh, collapsed lung and yeah, ribs and all kinds of stuff from before. I don't think it's as bad as that. Do you? No, but you can tell something's bugging him. Something is. Um, but, you know, he did get that uh, power play goal in game uh, three. Which was uh, a tip. the deflection. It was which, a deflection, you know, which was still a good goal. I mean, if, um, if you're going to get stuff from him in the playoffs, put him in front of the net if he's really that hurt, you know? Uh, I mean, if you're not gonna, if he's not gonna make plays like he usually does, stick him in front of the net. That's where he's he would best be, uh, he would best fit right now. Tom has on his hat stitched. He has 88, and that's Pasternak. And there's another player that has been pretty much a complete no show, really, for the playoffs, give or take a few games. But here's a guy that was very close to what 40 goals during this regular season, yeah. and has pretty much disappeared during the postseason. Is the hand and wrist or whatever that was going on with him still the issue? Or is this something different? Or is this something mentally? There's something wrong with him. I, I, I really don't know what could be possibly going on with him. I, I mean, it, we said last week that it could be the hand um, because, you know, he, his stick handling, his, you know, um, putting down the, you know, keeping, steadying the puck and hasn't been that great. Like he can't is. get a clear pass within his neutral zone or wherever he is going from stuff um, and, and control it. It seems like he has no puck control when he gets his shot. He's missed a lot and whiffed, and he hasn't really wound up and really let one loose. But on the other hand, in game three, he did have that backhand goal, and if your hand's bothering you, you're not. Getting no, that. You're not getting that, especially if he, since he elevated it. That's where the evidence proves to me that says this is more mental than physical with him. Yeah. I, 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 think, I would think. I think, uh, I don't know if it's, you know, because the other two aren't playing as well as they normally do or if it's because he's been up and down on the first and second line throughout the season or what it is, but um, he's got to figure something out. Your two most frustrating players on the Boston Bruins right now are? <laughs> or three. Why don't we say three? Let's go three to keep it fair. Oh. Do you want to fill in one, Phil? Do you have any idea? I mean, I, Bergeron, I, I he's one. said. But yep. uh, Marshan, maybe. Although Ash, I, absolutely. I wouldn't say Ber I, I wouldn't even I think put he's Marshan. Done more. I would you put... wouldn't put him there? He, he had no, had sorry, I wouldn't put game. Bergeron. Bergeron. Uh, Bergeron. Yeah, maybe not so much. Marshan, I, Marshan's my number one right he's now. He's my uh, number one, too, uh, right now. Yeah. And number series, how many goals did they have? None. None? Oh, really? One. One. One in game one. And I think one of those was an empty net. Oh, it was an empty net, yeah. yeah. Uh, number two number two is uh, Pasenak. I would say that. Um, or you could put another one in that slot, too. Somebody who really should be demoted to the fourth line center. No. Why? You don't think so? No. I think he's been useless this playoff. No, David Krejci. No, David Krejci. No, 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 I disagree. You you should get much more production from Krejci. I, dis I disagree. After that regular season he had, I think he's been awful. Well, he's like eighty-five now, right? He he seems it. There. The way well, he's I mean, playing, he seems it. Well, it, no, he's not, not he's most of it. I mean, why I, wouldn't? Why aren't you critical on on, on Krejci? Because I, I, when I'm critical on certain players, Tom, you know what happens. I know. And this is why off, I'm doing it you right go now. Go off on a rant, but um. But why, why do I do that? What usually happens when I go off on a rant on certain players? Who was the one player that I was on a rant from? And they scored that. Yeah. What, well, who was it? Tell everybody so they know. Charlie uh, Coyle. Yeah, that's right. A couple you, times. A couple yeah, times I was. Yeah, couple times. I was all over him at the beginning. Because I remember on this show, we can even date back a few episodes, like a month back, and I said, where's Coyle? He can't score. He can't shoot and everything. Well, point proven. Sometimes, and usually nine times out of ten, when I get critical on players, the day or game or, game or two after my little spiel I give with them, typically they snap out of it and do something to produce. So my chopping block today is Brad Marchand, David Krejci, and Jacob DeBrusque. Those are my three. Show up to play, get your job done, and go win the cup instead of being... 
basically playing like crap. That's how well, I feel it's been. I'll do you one better. Okay. Uh, my number one, obviously, and that goes without saying, I think it's anonymous across all Boston uh, Bruins fans, um, is Brad Marchand. Okay, now we can talk about that. Correct. No, number two, David Pasternak. Number three, I would have to say uh, number three and four are a toss-up between Heinen and DeBrusque. Okay, I could see that. Um, and my number five would be Krejci. Okay. Because the other two, you know, Krejci's making the plays – to them and they can't do anything with it. I believe it. Okay. Um, and Heinen does not play well in this series, I must say. He is not a hitter. He's more of a skill, finesse, yeah. speed guy. You haven't really seen him. You haven't really heard his name much. Nope. Um, so, yeah, that's why he's he's above uh, Krejci. And that. he's above the people that are on the fourth line, too. Those are more gritty, hardworking, physical players. Yeah, I mean, even as frustrating as Nordstrom has been through the regular season, he's he's had, had he a had pretty a, good... He had a great game four. <clears throat> great game four. And even game two, and he had a great game, game, game three, with two. two. So you're getting production from there. You're getting it from Achari. Now, again, there's no Wagner because Wagner had... Uh, was it a broken wrist? I think that's what they diagnosed us with. Upper body, so that's yeah. why that he is not a part of that fourth line. But you, well, you got to get your production <clears throat> from somewhere. And Nordstrom has done a... Fairly decent job with doing that. And they were talking about Zach and Iden possibly coming back for Game 5, but uh, Bruce Cassidy shut that down. So We'll talk about what we ex- expect for Game 5 in a second. I want to go back to the Marshan front. we got to talk about what our expectation is. Here's a guy that should be a proven star in this hockey league. He dipsy doos. He handles the puck and doesn't shoot on net one more time. I'm going to try my best to go through the television screen, strangle him, and put him in the penalty box. He can't shoot a damn puck to save his life on the net. Why? Uh, Why does he feel he has to be too cute with the puck? Well, this series, it seems like he'd much rather pass than shoot, and he'd much rather shoot than pass. Why? Uh, something's going through his brain where he thinks that he needs to shoot when he should pass. And well, someone should, like, lay him up and say, get your act together or we're going to lose. Hopefully Cassidy or somebody on the coaching staff laid into him a little bit and said, play the hockey that you usually always do. I don't I, get I, what the problem is I right now. I hope they do. I mean, because he made the same exact play that he did in uh, game two and game four where he, you know, he and Bergeron had a two-on-one or two on two, and he passed it right into the defenseman instead of putting it on net. I I looked at game two from Marshan from his play was more to blame on one of those uh, goals being scored than Achara would. Remember that play that when um, Tuca got the initial save and then the rebound got loose? That was because Marshan was out of place. Right. He's had the worst series that out of all the Bruins right now on the team, outside of maybe Bacchus. Bacchus has been pitiful out there too. Uh, he's been making hits, but he, I mean, everybody's been everybody on the Blues have been ganging up on him every time he's on the ice. Now you would also think that <clears throat> listening to me and hearing my tone, that yes, I'm voicing frustration from it, and I'm voicing the frustration because I still feel the Bruins have that chance of winning the entire thing. I'm being a little bit more hard on them right now because I don't want this opportunity to get blown, and it seems. Like, when they take their foot off the gas, they're unprepared in game two and four specifically. You have a Blues team who, in my opinion, doesn't deserve to really be in the spot they are, win the game. The Bruins have let those two teams, have let the Blues beat them by not showing up. Yeah, I mean, mean they showed up more in game four than they did in game two. But, um, yeah, I mean, we can, you know go back and forth on how game how bad game two was all day. But um, game four was definitely a better display of hockey. But, again, they, you know, go down a defenseman and have to skate with five. And that is tough, As I mean. But, the, and I don't know. I mean, we, we did talk after game two on the show about um, – how Grizzly went down and they didn't really play with enough spunk to, like, play in honor of him. Yeah, because Grizzly we went down for game said, two. And, and then, and then they we were said, down down and, a defenseman and then they had only five for the rest of what, the game. And what did we say that show? We said, oh, what do they need, Chara or Bergeron or someone to go down? And sure enough, game four, Chara goes down and they, they played a little harder, but not hard enough. So game two, that's when the concussion upper body injury happened for Matt Grizzly. We had Chara get 
a shot in the face. Off his own stick. Off his own stick. Oh. Ended up having a broken jaw after game four. Let's fast forward to game five. Reports are out at the Garden right now that both Chara and Grizzlick are playing tonight. What I don't know is if that they are skating 7D and one less forward. Not sure on that. Tom, what would you do in this situation? Uh, I would keep John Moore dressed just in case either Char or Grizzly need a rest. I mean, I'm sure ne e neither of them are really going to play as many minutes as they normally do as, or as they're used to. Um, you'll definitely see a lot more of John Moore. Um, which, uh, which is fine. Right. Moore's been I'm excellent. Okay. I'm okay with You that. have an unbelievable luxury of being able to have some guys that aren't dressed that you can put into your lineup and be impact quality players. Moore's just one of those guys. Mm -hmm. So it's great that you have him. You also have Steve Camper. Is he a name that could be floated into it tonight? Probably not. Probably not. Most likely You not. also have Vakanayan. Vakanayan? Vakanayan? Vakanayan. And he's not going to be a he's part. They not. know he was practicing yesterday at ice if a chance that he could go in. He's a, one of the draft picks that was from this year. Very talented and will definitely be a part of the future here with the Bruins. But reports out again, it seems like Chara and Grizzly will be back into the lineup. But I think that they should to be safe, skate 7D. No, and Who comes out of the lineup if it's, uh, if it's minus one, minus one forward? Because uh, I'll tell you who I want, but I don't think it's going to happen. I could tell you who I want, too. Who do you I want? I think it's going to happen. I want Pass to knock out. No, I don't think that's going to happen. I want Bacchus out. No, if any, I think I think if anybody's going to get scratched, it's going to be Heinen. It should be. I think knowing how Cassidy operates, I think Heinen's going to be that that scratch. So they'll probably float Pashnik between one and two, and may, they might skate like a double shift on some of the lines to although, keep it fair. Although I don't know if I would double up Pashnik's minutes with the way he's been playing. I wouldn't either. I I, I think, would double up Johansson yep. and Coyle first out of all of the guys that are out mm -hmm. there right now. That's right. what I would do. And especially Corrali, I might give some more. So you might see you might see a mix of Coyle on the wing on the second line because he can play winger yep. um, as well as center. Or you might see Johansson going up and down. Who knows? Now Phil, I have a question for you. I want Phil to get involved with this well, too. We'll see. If you had a broken a jaw if you had a broken right jaw <laughs> from <laughs> yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. would you step into the lineup and play? Considering I mean, it'll be the Stanley Cup, what would you do in that situation? I mean, if I'm getting paid for it and I'm six nine, yep, and I'm gonna charge Bill. And this could be your very last chance at a cup. Very last chance at a cup, and it's probably my last couple games. Yep. I mean, if there's no, I don't know, if there's a way that I'm sure all of their mouths are messed up, mm -hmm. like all of their their mine's body. been messed up since I was born. So. Well, I mean, no, just hockey players in general. Like half of their teeth are gone. Yeah. Some have bitten their tongues off or parts of it. Teeth, teeth are optional in the in and the, the, go. In the, NFL, in the uh, NFL. In the <laughs> NHL. Oh, there yeah, we go, there Nick. Go. Yep. But no, yeah. I, I mean, I guess give it a go if you're wired shut. Yeah. I sometimes I need should be wired shut. There's but, yeah. Well, you know. there's a death wish yeah. to be had. And yeah. I yeah. would say yeah. that too. <laughs> oh, he already has loud and clear. So of course. Um, so yeah, you not? would play. Why not? How about you, Tom? If you I had mean, the broken jar and if you were in Chara's position or whatever, would you do the same? Would you play? Um, so, you know, I'm wearing the C on my chest. I got my jaw wired shut. Yeah, I would play. Yep. But uh, who's going to step in for the leadership role? Who's going to motivate the players if they go down by, like, one or two goals? I'd say he gets hit right away. It's just like, oh, there goes his yep. jaw. We, we would think <laughs> it should be Bergeron. We would think. If Chara stepped away, who's your, who's your de facto captain that's on this team? I would say it's Bergeron. Bergeron, wouldn't it be? Yeah. I would yeah. say no. But I mean, you seem like you were struggling with that. No, no, no. no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like just he was a big. Yeah. He was a big motivator when he came out of the uh, dressing room with the full mask on and everything. But now his jaws wide shut. I mean, who's going to get the team pumped up? Oh, I see. Bergeron's Bergeron's kind of on the quiet side. Actually, verbally, yeah. Yeah, he is on the quiet side. Then, then I think you'd have to go to Big Mouth Marshan, but his stick needs to do the talking. Right. So. Actions speak louder than words. I think we all need to see the performance. I think that's plain and simple. So Chara tonight should be out in a little bit more of a protective mask. Chara is one of the last of the NHL players who has pretty much an open, um, an open helmet. He doesn't really have a face shield, no shield in front. Yeah. He will be wearing that. Will that be some sort of a factor tonight? We'll have to see. I definitely think it's going to be an adjustment. 
I know he's been practicing with this special shield and stuff on. It's a different view of the ice, obviously, for him. I don't think he'll be high in minutes, but I think he'll be a part of the defensive front for the Bruins tonight. Should be still out there on the first yeah, line, right? I think, I think there are only two players that don't have the face shield uh, in the league, and they're both playing in the Stanley Cup final. Who's the other one on the other Ryan O'Reilly. Ryan O'Reilly is the other one. It's a risk. I know I wouldn't do it. No thanks. Well, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't I mean, do we, it. I mean, we wouldn't do it either, probably. I mean, Hell like, no. if I'm not him, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't do, do it. it if it's just me. Right. No. Nope. Yeah. I wouldn't play my like that. My height, no. No. <laughs> yeah. Me six, either. If I'm 6'9", yeah. what are the, get my what are bell the chances rung. that a puck comes up? I'm like the yeah, Tory Krug over here and get my bell rung. Yeah. Now, Grizzlick. There's a guy that got don't, a massive don't hit. Don't get me started. No, I have no idea. So. If you were in his position, would you ch- would your would your would your game change knowing that you just came off of a concussion, re-entering the lineup? Yeah, Does your game change a little bit? Yeah. What was the little- famous uh, Bruin Mark? Uh, who's the famous Bruin? Mark Savard. 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 Thank you. There you go. They got the big if, hit. Yeah, and that was who was that? Ba- um, hmm. Who hit that? Who Matt hit? Cullen. Okay. And that was late. That was deep in the playoffs too, wasn't it? Or like early in the playoffs, like years ago, um, almost a decade ago. I don't even know if it was in the playoff. I think it was, I know it was. Oh, he's, he was season. a penguin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was a penguin. I think it was more no, of a it was regular. No, like in the middle of the regular season. Middle, oh, middle yeah. of regular season. But I guess uh, and his career though, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much uh, because he came back, but it's so physically and he still had like PTSD yep. from it. And they don't talk a lot about that. So I mean, I, I guess it depends on the severity of it, and just like you know what the doctor tells you. Right. So I mean. I guess, yeah, see how you feel. A lot of guys taking that risk tonight, I'll tell you that. I, yeah, the, the biggest stage. You, you, you got to do one of these tonight and just hope for the best for these I mean, guys. I hope oh. one of them doesn't die. I do, there. too. That's I mean, that would, that would be uh, not so good. Brilliant television, but horrible. Yeah, well, I mean, if condition. they did, they would probably even just call off the entire. Oh, would I play point. with a concussion in this series? No. Absolutely. Even with oh. the Stan- even with the Stanley Cup even on the line, even with the Stanley Cup on yeah. the line, I would no. Sorry, our team has enough depth. I'm not taking that. Whose chance. injury is more concerning? Is it Chara's or Grizzlick right now? Grizzlick. Okay, you think oh. it's more Grizzlick? In, the, in okay. this series, yeah. Okay, because one more hit. That's just how the Blues are. Yeah. They're so physical with what they've done. Yeah. Now let's talk about the Blues because we really haven't talked much about them. We know going into this series, they had one really good star that was Vladimir Tarasenko. They also have Ryan O'Reilly as an, another player that's on that crew. But it's a team that also hates the guts of David Backus, their former captain, hmm. um, who was there for about 10 years there. He's taken, I think, the brunt of the angerness of, of, of this team. But I do have to say that from what I've seen from the Blues, it's amazing that they were the least penalized team in the league because there's been a lot of cheap shots and a lot of stupid kind of calls that have looked like they have the intent of, of injuring certain players. And it seems like the refs haven't been completely even with the amount of calls that have gone for both sides. You want to talk about that for a sec? Um, so I was listening to a uh, hockey podcast. I won't give the name because I don't want to, you know. Um, but they were talking about how uh, Craig Berube, the coach of the Blues, after game three in his press conference was talking, uh, basically called out the refs. Mm-hmm. And said exactly what you said. You know, we we've been the least penalized team this entire playoffs. Isn't that, other isn't that kind of crazy though? Yeah, I, I can't believe that this team was not more penalized from what we've seen at least from this series. A lot of cheap shots, and, but back to your you point. know. So and then you know they end up getting calls going their way, aka the check to the head on Tarasenko, which yeah. good acting job. Yeah. Um, Bennington, you know, falling to the ice because Marshall Marshan did his, his little tap there, and uh, and then the tripping call on Heinen, which never was a trip, really. No, I so I watched that replay twenty times, and one of my friends said that it hit the toe of his skate, and I watched it twenty times over and over again. I was watching skates, everything, nothing, barely touched him, and they called tripping call because he dove. Mm-hmm. Three embellishment, or yeah, three embellishments. They're calls, called embellishments. That's what they. That's what they should no be called. No penalties. That should have no business whatsoever in the NHL, and the refs really aren't doing much of it. It's ridiculous. I think the refs have had zero control this whole entire playoff. Zero. I mean, aside oh, the from whole, no, the whole thing, I don't think that they've just just from this series. Excuse yeah. me. I don't think they've shown whatsoever any control. Aside, it's lopsided on what we're seeing. Aside from like no fights going on, that's basically the only control they've had. 
And it's very clear that the NHL wants the Blues, not the Bruins, to win the Stanley you Cup. You think? Oh, very, mm-hmm. I don't know. very. That's, the announcers, I think, thinking, have been man. pitiful. That's dangerous thinking. Worse than I've heard from our NFL people. I think uh, oh, Doc they, Emmerich yeah. and Eddie Olchek. Eddie Olchek have been completely Blues. How? How many times did Eddie say that it's a completely detrimental situation if Chara can't come back? Yeah, he's, they said it about 10 times from stuff. You got to mute their broadcast and listen to the 98.5 one. And you got to. I, 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 I strongly suggest it. Yeah. It's frustrated the living hell out of me, this whole series. We've had to listen to it. When Milbury was there, it wasn't so bad. But these two clowns together, I don't know why they get so much praise. It's completely biased. On how you call a game. I think it takes. If you're a, a national salt, broadcaster, too, yeah. you should be ashamed of yourselves. Well, well there's mean, a chance Milbury might do the uh, do game six because you know Eddie's going to be riding the horses in Belmont Stakes. Oh, good. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll get a chance to do that. Well, but I'm just. No, uh, no, I mean, we're here broadcasting, and of course, we're all Bruins here. But these guys are NBC national broadcasters. So are they, in, in your estimation, both of you? They're pretty heavily leaning towards. The oh, thing. it's yeah, least, so clear. At least two of them. It's, I mean, I will take with a grain of salt from, yeah. uh, Nick's point of view because I think. Well, no, I think I, also as Boston. You fans, can smell a homer when when, sure. when 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 you when you listen. Well, no, that's yeah. true. I think that's true too. And yeah. I haven't really, uh, I wasn't really listening to the. Well, I guess a little bit to the national broadcast. I don't, I don't really pay attention to them either. But it was it was a blowout when I was watching it. Right. It was kind of like it was needless to yeah. listen, but. I can understand, and we go through this all the time. And I, I don't like natural broadcasts that no. much. Uh, yeah. NBA, I actually really love the. I actually broadcast, don't really like much of NBC N- broadcasts. MLB, I don't. NBA care for. is pretty decent, I must say. Yeah, they're very. They're all. They're about, pretty. They're pretty they're mellow. The they're yeah. pretty even when it comes to calling a, calling the game right way. Sure. So kudos to them on that. Yeah. But MLB, like, it's another. Like, I will say. Did you hear I the game? And I don't mean oh, to what? go on no, a no, different no, no, tangent. No. The Sunday game for the Red Sox on ESPN. No. It was the most embarrassing broadcast I've ever Wait, seen or Twitter, listened to in Instagram, my life. Facebook. Who, he posted who, like five times on Facebook and Twitter about how ESPN, bad it was. <laughs> and he screwed up how many people player names you? and errors oh. on that on that telecast at least five times. You got Jessica Mendoza, who I have no clue on why she's employed by that. Has she, she done she doesn't a, do anything? Yeah. Or is she just is she, she just a sideline with reporter? Or is she and I a, don't no, want to be sexist booth, when yeah. I say the comment, but and, I think she's she there because she's a, a woman. Yeah. She, oh, you don't think she actually had any? I think she's only there because give? she's a girl. They're just filling a quota for I, I, That's what I think. Yeah. And then A-Rod tell, telling us all that Eduardo Nunez is a hitting machine? Are you serious? I do, I do love A-Rod in the booth. Are you I think serious? He's great. I think he he's great, though. He's this weird, like... He's almost like a. You tell him to tell him to take J Lo to a private island and get off the face of the oh, earth. Oh, I don't know. I, I think he's pretty good. Him and Big Poppy together are the best. As like. I have to agree with that. Yeah. That is like that what is I good. actually when enjoy the, the watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's but what he's, I he's enjoy not watching. The, shock him. board. He's not as bad as I he shock was board nails good. cringing. No, but it I was hate, Sunday what's his night. Name? Uh, and he also does uh, some NFL games, but. Chris Collinsworth. No, I actually do. I, you'll hate me. I actually like Collins. Jim, Jim Nance? No, not Nance. I don't mind. Nance is kind of a... Tony Romo. N- I love Romo. Romo was pretty... Oh, Al Michaels? Not Al Michaels. Uh, Joe Buck. Joe Buck. Joe Buck. Yeah, I was going to say, his dad was a St. Louis uh, yeah. announcer. Yeah. No, Buck is the worst to me. I think he's just... Mil- I've grown to not those. as much dislike him. Yeah, he's... Eh. But early on with stuff, like before yeah. the Red Sox won the World Series and oh, stuff was, like he that. Was oh, he was brutal. He was brutal. But he also just seems, like, brutal. very bland. I, mean, I guess you have to be, right? You have to be very bland to do this sort of thing. You do. You do. Especially baseball when there's not a lot going on. No, like and I don't. I didn't mean to go on a baseball no, thing right. with it, but I, this got us to it our point involved. with the broadcasters and everything. <laughs> yeah. And my, oh, my, it was – you'd even notice it. Sure, and I'm sure. not just being critical on my end from yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. but – it, it was to the point I where... I take it with a grain of salt when they... Especially, we're horrible around here. We well, totally are. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this. Pierre Maguire absolutely hates the Bruins. Oh, what? It's just absolutely squid. But every every time Bruins. I do a tweet well, or something, what? I put so, Squidward in from Spongebob when I did do... Did you get any flack from the, uh, the oh, baseball my, stuff? Oh, my Twitter's been going nuts lately. Wow, you, you're one of, those, you're one of the only guys I know who... And I don't know a lot of people, but just like... I get blocked. Yeah, all like, the time. All the time. Pierre used to be a coach it's of the impressive. Penguins. Oh, so all right. So he absolutely then. loves yeah. Sidney Crosby. Can't yeah, yeah. stop talking yeah, about Sidney yeah. Crosby. Yeah. Didn't they fire? Like they fired him and they won the cup. Is that what Something happened? Like that. Yeah. 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 
I don't know if I'd hold the torch. When you for put Lance. Crosby yeah. and Malkin and him in the same room, oh, it can get oh. dirty. That's what I heard. <laughs> well, you know what? You know, to each his own. To each his own, Squidward. Um, anyways. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we so need to talk about what our thoughts are for Game Five, Six, Seven. If it goes to that point, um, I want to start first with Phil. If you have a general feeling, we have a two-two series right now. <laughs> it sounds like yeah. Well, yeah, general yeah. feeling. What's the yeah. magic number? What happens? No, I'm actually with Tom in the sense of like seven, because it seems like what's going on there. You know, they're tra- uh, trading blows. And it's just like, it doesn't seem like each team has found their uh, comfort That zone. win every other game. Bruins yeah. win game one, but also it seems like two. they're adjusting to whatever each other team is doing, and then just like, you think you got them figured out, and then here we go again. Mm-hmm. It just, uh, but I, I think it's exciting. I think it's good for the league, and I think it's good for uh, TV. And I think possibly, whether you want to believe in the refs or whoever wanting one way or the other, the NBA definitely is the worst at it. Oh, but it is. Uh, yeah, I think I think it might be game. I th- what's seven games? I think seven games. With who is your winner? Uh, I, I think the bees are going to take it. But be I, careful when you say that. I know bees. They're both bees. That right? Uh, the Bruins. So I, <laughs> I, but I saved myself intentionally saying that. Who could it be? Oh, I meant the Blues by yeah. saying the you, Blues. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to cover all ends uh, right there. Cover, sneaky, cover sneaky. My tail. No, yes. I think that the Bruins can do. I think okay. they're, from what I see and from what I hear, they're, they're the more talented team. Mm-hmm. And I think they have it. They just need to grab it, if that makes any sense. Don't let a wasted opportunity occur. If they do not win this, this will be a crushing blow to this organization. I'm just going to put that right out there. Because I, I, you, you would just completely collapse after that. Especially after the collapse in 2013. Yep. 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 What are your thoughts? Um, well, I have, I have uh, three outcomes. Okay. Uh, three, three ways this could turn. Three ways this could turn. But they all end in seven games. Okay. Um, you know, the, the Blues could win game five. And the Bruins could come back and win game six. And uh, probably have the... You know, momentum to win Game Seven back at home. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Blues could win Game Five, have the momentum going back to Game Six, back to St. Louis, and win in six games. Actually, sorry, so I lied. They don't all end in seven <laughs> games, but yep. whatever, um, six games. But you know, it also depends on which games Phil watches. I'm you know, sure because you know, you me being superstitious, Phil watched Game. Uh, the end, the third, fourth, look, yeah. and look what happened. They, yeah. You know, or, already we're blowing them out. But. So you're <laughs> telling me that Phil must watch Game Five tonight. Must watch Game Five and six. I won't be. I will be around probably for the end of it. So we'll, well see. that's a good thing. That is a good thing. That and, is a good and thing. And Game Six on uh, Sunday night. Well, Sunday's not bad. I don't have anything planned. And, okay. and it's on. Yeah, Sunday. No, and, <laughs> play your schedule, please. Yeah. Um, and it's probably going to be on NBC. Yeah. And it all depends uh, when not the NBC NBA sports. finals are. Mm. So. Um, so what's the outcome? Bruins. Okay. Win, period. Uh, whether it's six or seven. Okay. They'll win. Um, I'm, not really, uh, I'm not really too worried. Um, the Blues just don't have enough experience. So we're going to chalk this up more with a, a more experienced, better, which as we all feel, like we do feel that the Bruins are the better team. Do we all agree that? It yes. seems okay. It, yeah. That's well, what I. That's what I felt coming the, in. And the other thing is too, like we talked about off air, is the two days rest. Yes. Um, the Bruins, You're going to take my point, aren't you? I am going to take your point. All right, the Bruins fine. have. I said it before, <laughs> but Tom's going to steal it. Whatever. Go ahead. Um, I give you credit. Show. Thank you. I was going to give you credit. It's I, copyright. You know, you're, you're stealing my thunder, interrupting me here. I was going to give you credit. Well, boom! Here goes the lightning. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Bruins have played better after two days of rest. Um, whether that's because you know they're an older team and they they need the two know, days, have yep. not a lot of energy, but I mean, they came out in Game Three guns a blazing, um, and you, they couldn't be stopped. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Blues the Blues came out too, but they couldn't <laughs> really keep up with the no, Bruins. They couldn't. The Bruins kept pushing. They couldn't. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's why if it's going to be six games, I think that's why it would be. But I mean, you also have two of your better defensemen get hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think Rose is going to be a little scared, a little nervous, a little skittish. Um, but, yeah, those two aren't going to see a lot of minutes. I'm sticking with six games. You can dial the tape back from the last show, last couple. I said Bruins and six. I'm going to stick with it. I see the Bruins winning game five. Five to two, six to two, something like that. And the reason I'm saying it is because every time they lose, they respond. They come back, and they take care of the business that's needed. 
Game six to me is going to be the one that's tricky. And the reason I'm saying it's tricky is that would be the last game for the Blues at their place. Tougher to play, tougher environment. And I think the Blues try and figure out a little bit of maybe, maybe, of maybe what went wrong in game five for them. A responding game in a way. But back to what Tom stole from me earlier. Every time the Bruins have two days or more of rest, they respond very well with getting the job done and getting a victory. So I'm going to stick with that. If you look at game two, one day rest. If you look at game four in between three, one day rest. Every other's with two, we've got the job done. I'm going to stay with six. I'd love to see them win it at home. I wanted them to be in five, but they'd let that opportunity go away in game four. I think the crowd for game five tonight is going to be making that garden shake tonight. I think so. When you see Chara and Grizzlick back out there, if the Bruins turtle and don't get this job done tonight, boy, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be tough to win the Stanley well, Cup. They, I, I look at tonight as a must-win game if you're going to win the Stanley Cup tonight. I, I hope they just, I hope they're uh, ready for a little push, pushback from the Blues, a little more than uh, what they saw in Game 3. Destroy them. I, I mean, I'm not worried, but they're going to mm. definitely see a lot more push because the Blues know their mm -hmm. last opportunity is Game 6, really. What must the Bruins come out with then tonight? How do the Bruins beat them? The Bruins got to start out with the fourth line, third or fourth line. I would go with that. Um, get, do not start with your first. No, I agree. No. I don't like when the first starts. Um, you got to get your two best lines right now in the series out there to start, whether it's the fourth line, whether it's the third line. You have, I mean, yeah, okay, great. Bergeron's your best, you know, face-off guy. But you can't start with that line, not with the way they've been playing, not with their the way the uh, offense has been going. Um so, yeah, start with the third or fourth line and then uh, start with um, start with probably Krug and Carlo or Krug and McAvoy at defense. Okay. Um, I mean, you got Krug, who's, like, all fired up. He's been fired up since uh, game one. Um, he's definitely played a lot better than he has in the rest of the playoffs. Krug's had a great playoff. Um, and then you series. have your two best defensemen right now that are healthy. In McAvoy and, and Carlo. Carlo, so start one of those two. Or, you know, start Carlo and McAvoy. Have your two bigger guys out. The Blues can beat you with being more physical. The Bruins need to show that they're going to lay the bo their body on them too. And that's something that needs to be very clear at the very beginning of this game. You cannot come out turtling and allowing the Blues to destroy you. Stand up to them. Put them to the glass. If you got to take a penalty, take a penalty. They, can, they, they have proven that they have no power play that they can show. What are they, one for 11? I think so, yeah. Just make it a smart one. Because though. the Blues want to do something stupid. Let them do something stupid. Let them go to the box, go on your power play, and then you get the job done. Make, if you're going to take, take a penalty, make it a smart one. Take Speed another, and skill. Take another guy with Speed, you. skill. Those are my two big things I'm looking for from the Bruins to, to beat them. You need this in five and six to win the cup. If you bring the physicality, then there is no Game 7, in my opinion. No. But you cannot back down to the Blues. You need to put pucks on net, cycle the puck, shoot it, a.k.a. Marshan, to get the job done. Those are my keys to the game. And, of course, Tuka Rask being the, the usual uh, concrete block in don't front even, of the ice, don't brick wall. Talk, to him, talk about him. Le let, I mean, if he goes to win this, it's, it's, it's honestly... Better statistical, uh, statistically than Tim Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's had... Which is amazing. He's had a sub two goals against, or yeah, goals against average this entire series. Actually, since the last game against uh, Carolina. Who would you have as a banner captain for game five at the place, at the Garden? Huh. The Chara. Can't. Can't, can't oh, have a player no. oh, that's on there. Oh, 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 the banner. Oh, oh, banner see, captain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Belichick was for game two. They lost. Did they get Orr in there already? Yep. Or Orr was in for what? Game one. And no, game one was the stand. Some of the Stanley Cup no, members. No, he was back yeah. in. Car he was back he was in Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think he was game two. Two, one or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> who would make that place go nuts? Uh, number 77. Bork? Bork? 
I was he, thinking he David be, Ortiz. He would be one. Oh, I was going to say think, Julian Edelman or Ortiz, Ortiz or something. Well, Brady can't. Oh, There's yeah. no Patriot can be there right now because oh, training they're getting their rings tonight. Oh. The Patriots get their rings tonight at, at, hey, Bella, who, at who uh, better, Kraft's house. Who better to get people riled up So it can't be a Patriot. Irving. Celtics, <laughs> the Celtics Here don't do it for me. Whip them in the, the Celtics don't do it for me. Maybe no. if you have Kevin Garnett, that would kind of go nuts. Kevin Garnett would be nuts. But I don't think he's into think hockey he that much. No. I would say, I yeah, I would say, I would say. I would think it needs to be a Red Sox, probably Ortiz. I would say Ortiz. Or Pedro. Ortiz, uh, Ortiz or Bork. I mean, they're yeah. in uh, Kansas City right now, though. Ortiz ain't out, isn't out there. No. No. He's not with the team. No, he's not with the team. Someone from the New England Revolution, maybe? No, he's not. He's back in Boston. Oh, I, I saw a thing. I think those are the, your, your banners tonight. Well, then tonight. maybe if he's back in Boston, he Rene could be Rene Rancourt. That would be pretty cool. That would, that, that would go nuts. Uh, he was the former right? national yeah, anthem yeah, 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 singer. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. one other thing that we haven't talked about. The uh, national anthem singer for the Blues. He is horrible. Uh, horrible. But he doesn't even sing. He lets the crowd sing. Yeah, and and I saw I saw uh, after game four that he's thinking of retiring after this. Uh, well, I season. think he should because somebody <laughs> will fire him. I've been oh, saying no. that. I've been saying he should retire since game three. I mean, not to dis- no disrespect to the national anthem, but that guy is the worst national anthem singer I've ever I've heard at a hockey game. That, it was just it's it's it's. Oh man, it's, it's like Jessica sing, Mendoza, A Rod, and Matt Vescursion on sings steroids. He half of it and then holds the mic up for the rest of the, for the entire crowd. Singing. I'm not as opposed to that as I'll bring I'll as I always do rake in but the NBA finals. But to his credit, finals. I'm glad he does because then we'd have to sit through the whole thing of him singing. Oh, yeah, fair enough. True. Yeah. Is he that well in oh, the NBA finals? Bad. The Canadian uh, national anthem. Uh, I think game one or something. They part of because uh, they do both anthems nashville nashville does yeah. the best national anthem hey you know i've seen that it's pretty good yeah, yeah. it's pretty good well she was putting her mic to the crowd that was the whole thing towards the end anything else that we want to say before we wrap up our our, our pre-game show here uh raptors and seven the first all. line sucks and they need to step <laughs> yeah, it up yeah. <laughs> why this shirts this this is the point if this man shows up tonight and scores i'm calling a win now the other thing i want to say too i have two more pieces of information that I must say. Did you know that when Brad Marchand scores in a Bruins game in the playoffs, this is all of his time, his career, they are 19 and one. Would it shock you to say I did know that? And I gave That's you the, one and key. I gave you that the fact. other key. Did you know that if you win game one in the Stanley Cup, that you have those teams that win, win 77% of the time? I'll take that chance. True. You won game one. Finish the job. That's my that's my piece. I like it. What's your what's yours? I got nothing to say after that. I can't follow that up. <laughs> Finish your job. We'll leave it at that. Well, our job's done. Hopefully the Bruins can take care of their job this tonight. Get a win for game five. Hopefully for game six they can wrap this show up and then hoist another um, what do we call it? Stanley banner. Stanley Cup and banner up in the garden. We wish them luck and we will see you next time on Face the Facts. Goodbye.